Hello, I'm Alec Baldwin, and I'd like to talk to you about some of the amazing things the Screen Actors Guild Foundation does that you may not have heard about. The SAG Foundation is a nonprofit organization that helps to ensure that all actors have the support they need to follow their dreams. This includes providing a catastrophic health care safety net. When actors need help, we're there for them. Offering master classes and seminars so actors can work on perfecting their craft, as well as the opportunity to use their gift of storytelling to join the fight for children's literacy in their own communities and on the web. The SAG Foundation relies on contributions from people like you, so please visit us at sagfoundation.org to find out more about these programs and all the things your tax-deductible donations can help us do. Support the SAG Foundation. Back now. Awesome. Hello. Very, we're very happy to have you all join us tonight. My name is Melissa Zachary, and I am the interim program uh, director for the Life Ref program. Um, just a few housekeeping things. If you have a cell phone or anything that could possibly make some kind of distracting noise, please take a moment to turn it off now. Um, other things just to mention, um, if you like Mr. Alec Baldwin had a few good things to say about donating to the program. Um, we are able to provide this wonderful programming for you because of kind donations. So if you like what you see tonight, please jump on our website at sagafoundation.org, locate the giant pink red button, and give us some happy love. Um, just a few, just just a few announcements for tonight. In that. Um, we had a, a, a change in the panel. Um, the lovely Anne Globe is under, unable to attend tonight's. Um, ooh, I have some. I have mood music. It's very dramatic. I feel like Anne should have had a more dramatic thing. Um, so Anne cannot attend tonight um, due to a conflict, but. We were very, very happy to that um, the lovely Madeline Hammond of Madeline Hammond Associates, who is also the chief marketing officer at, at Variety for a long time, is able to join us and give us pearls of wisdom, as well as the lovely Anna Jones, who is the digital marketing and street team coordinator, is also going to join us. So two for the price of one. It was a great night. Um, and I think that's it. Please, oh, question cards. We're, um, because we're live streaming, it's important that you write all your questions down um, so that uh, we can give them to the, um, the moderator. And so while you're thinking, listening, questions are turning, please write them down. And I'll be walking around the aisles to collect them from you. Thank you very much for attending and enjoy the panel. Hey, everybody. How you doing? All right. My name is Jeff Cohen. I'm going to be moderating this panel. Thank you for coming out. I apologize in advance. I'm a little groggy. I just, uh, I, I literally just flew in from New York today, and I've learned something. Uh, I've learned something uh, that might help you, not necessarily related to marketing, but the bars in New York stay open very late. <laughs> it's no like 12:30 last call. They just keep going. So just when you're doing your Broadway show, keep that in mind. Pace yourself. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm really happy to be here. I'm actually an entertainment attorney. Um, my, my law firm, Cohen Gardner LLP, is based in Beverly Hills. It's been around for about 10 years. Prior to that, I was at Universal Studios. And prior to that, I was a Goonie. Uh, I, I actually, the reason why I'm here, in addition to being an entertainment attorney, and we represent actors and writers and producers, and when you get that big deal, call up Jeff Cohen, we'll negotiate it for you in conjunction with your agent for a reasonable fee. Um, but uh, you know, SAG has always been a very important part of my life growing up as a kid, when I was a kid actor. And I'm very proud to have a pension with SAG. And actually, when I went to undergraduate at Berkeley, in part, how I was able to pay for it in part, was a scholarship from the SAG Foundation. So I love SAG, and anything I can do to help my, my pals at SAG, I'm happy to do so. Now, this is going to be a great, we have, we have a star-studded uh, panel here in marketing. And what we'd like to do is go through each person and uh, tell them a little bit about yourself and kind of your relationship to marketing and how you help market for actors. So we'll start with Brian. Great. Hi, everybody. Um, First time speaking to the microphone. Apparently, I don't know how to use these things. Um, my name is Brian Wold. I um, have a uh, actually a varied background. I started out as an English teacher and volleyball coach, and then ended up in public relations and marketing for years uh, in the Midwest, working for a city government. Um, when uh, my wife and I moved out to Los Angeles, uh, I met this dude, who you will hear about later, um, and. Um, uh, together, he and I um, have created a, a little website called Casting About. We're going to show you some stuff about Casting About tonight. Um, um, but I'm also wearing the, uh, the you know, my, my old hats again about public relations and marketing. Uh, 
Uh, hey guys, uh, Blair. my name is Blair Hickey. Uh, I'm an actor. Uh, started out in New York after school, doing um, some some work on the soaps and uh, some off off, way the hell off Broadway, <laughs> and uh, uh, and actually started doing uh, a little more soap work and then um, some TV work and and discovered that's where my passion was. So moved out to LA in in 2000 uh, and started working here. Um, I think the path quickly that brought me here tonight is. Um, I had a little bit of success in TV when I was here, and I was sort of courted by an agency uh, who, who said, come leave your very small a uh, agency and come join us, and we'll take care of you. And, and, uh, and you know, kind of did the song and dance and started messengering scripts to my house, and things were pretty nice until a year later when they cut their client list in half, <laughs> and, uh, and I was given the, the ax. And um, I, I had done that thing where, you know, for the previous year, I sat back and waited for the agency to do the work, and, and I basically had to start over. All the people I knew in town didn't know me anymore, and I, I really had to start over, and I went looking to contact casting directors, producers that I'd worked with, and I couldn't find them. Uh, it turns out casting moves around a lot. And I was trying to market myself, but didn't have the information I needed, so I got obsessive. I think it was revenge mode. <laughs> and. Uh, and, and started keeping this, this database of who was casting what as, as a way to build what turned out to be my marketing plan. And um, had some folks in acting class say, you know, we keep calling you asking you for this information, who's casting what, and you should do something with it. Uh, fortunately for me, my good friend and next door neighbor is a genius in all things internet and knows a thing or two about PR and marketing. So um, we spent about a year, developed this website uh, called Casting About, um, which uh, started to grow. And then I think what was, really exciting for us is three years ago we were bought by Breakdown Services. And um, the fun part there is now as an actor, uh, I have a desk at Breakdown Services. Uh, I've, I, I actually get to peek behind the curtain. Uh, and, and I think one of the things we get to talk about tonight is I've learned so much that I thought I knew uh, about marketing and submissions and the casting process and developing relationships with casting directors. Uh, it's been an incredible education for me, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll talk about that tonight. Hi, I'm Anna Jones. I uh, uh, came out here to Los Angeles. Uh, I have a background in theater. Oh, hello. Here, excuse me. Uh, just growing up in school, uh, and at some point I uh, moved to Los Angeles in 2003, and I realized that I... Uh, my true passion really lay in writing, <laughs> as I think a lot of people have, uh, you know, experienced that crossover from performance to writing. Um, and I did a run of uh, classes at the Upright Citizens Brigade, uh, where I met the street team coordinator for the LA Weekly. Um, that was in 2007, and uh, I joined the street team. Uh, and that was an interesting experience because it was... Uh, on the street marketing. It was like the face-to-face uh, -face with uh, general public level of interaction. Um, so over the almost five years now that I've been working with LA Weekly, um, I continued to uh, grow there and I w did a couple of internships there and now I'm the digital marketing and street team coordinator. Um, so I spend a lot of time uh, coordinating events uh, and you know, marketing for movies and all of our various ad clients. Uh, as a lot of you probably know, LA Weekly uh, sort of functions across the board in the entire city as a source for a lot of event listings and different categories, um, including film and theater. Um, and so I got some interesting experience coordinating the theater awards um, a few times. And uh, yeah, so hopefully, I. I I also have a big focus in social media. So, um, yeah, so I have some, you know, if anybody has thoughts or ideas, questions about social media, you know, oh, excited. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So, and I was also added a uh, very last minute yeah, to this panel. So it's a real awesome. privilege to be here. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Anna. Hi, guys. I'm uh, Paul Weber, casting director for film and television. And, and I, I mean, I'm sitting up there with all these you know, geniuses of, of marketing and PR, and that that's just not me. <laughs> um, and w I think maybe I'm here to sort of just, you know, observe and learn You're the buyer. Well Come on. You're the, you're the whole... Yeah, but you're, I tell you what... You're the ultimate you know, boss level. You're the guy, man. Well, we got to get past you. you know, how do we... Yeah, and here's the deal about that. I mean, we're learning... 
how things are changing so quickly too uh, in marketing, as you are, as actors are. And you know, we came from a sort of an old school background, and uh, some of us still have one foot in that, you know, in that graveyard. Um, <laughs> and, and things have, are changing so quickly from how you all and we all, I, I put some of us started out and still are actors, and and uh, how we approach the business was, um, you know, was through the traditional routes of agents and pictures and resumes and the occasional gift basket that's dropped off at our <laughs> office, um, you know, as a thank you, or that was about as close to any kind of approach to marketing as anyone took. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, now with, with media changing so much and the, the, digital, the digital world is sort of imploding uh, and, and uh, surrounding us with so many options, um, I'm here also to learn some of the, the changes that are being made and also to just maybe hopefully give you a little perspective from a casting point of view about what works for us, what is maybe more effective um, as there are so many more choices now and you guys have so many more opportunities to empower yourself and come from a position of, of strength rather than feeling lost and desperate and, and a bit victimized. Um, and uh, so That's thank great. you for having me. Yep. Cool, thank you for coming. My name is Madeline Hammond. Uh, as you heard, I have my own company, Madeline Hammond and Associates, not very original, but <laughs> I've had my own company for a couple years um, and I do marketing. I do marketing and I do branding. I do it for companies, I do it for individuals, I do it for anybody that comes to me and says, I need something, I need to either go to the next level or I need to bring in more customers or I need to reach a new audience or I need to reinvent myself. So I was uh, very happy when I was asked to fill in uh, with Anna for Anne's place and be here and um, shed some light into this crazy world that sometimes is daunting for people, particularly for actors, which is like there's so many things. What do I do? And I don't want to waste a lot of money, so I want to target it exactly right. And that's something that I find extremely interesting. And the game, Paul, has changed dramatically over the last year. There are more options available, but there's also a ton of confusion. So maybe we can unravel some of that tonight. Thank you very much, Madeline. Well, I think it's going to be a great panel because we have people with our, all different types of perspectives. Um, I'd like to kind of go through, uh, you know, through the panel and just ask to start, you know, big picture, you know, big picture question. What's your take on the current state of marketing for actors? Well, I have the disadvantage that I don't get to think about this one. Um, so um, the, you know, the thing, the thing that actors, have, m most of you realize now is that you have a lot more control, and that's both good news and bad news. There are things that you can do for yourself now, whether it's uh, self-producing things, whether it's being sort of you know your own agent or manager through systems like uh, Actors Access and the other uh, systems that are out there. There are ways that you can promote, market, be your own agent and manager, et cetera, and that, uh, and that has sort of changed the opportunities. Um, it means you spend less time sitting around, or at least you can, spend less time sitting around waiting for, um, for someone else to do something for you. Uh, but the downside of that is now there are all these businesses that have sp sprung up that are reaching into your pocket for all kinds of uh, things. Buy this, do this, go to this workshop, do this, uh, take this course, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, and I think part of what I'm hoping we'll be able to help you with tonight is to figure out what makes sense. How do I make a strategy that makes sense for me? Um, there's not, there, there aren't in this business a lot of rules. There are people who will tell you there are a lot of rules. Um, uh, you know, do this and you'll be successful, right? Uh, but it, as soon as you talk to your friends, there's somebody else who did something completely different and it worked for them. And so now you're in this weird position, like, oh, well, how do I decide between the crazy thing that shouldn't have worked but did and this tried and true that, that you know, I've been doing and doing and it cost me money and it didn't work. And I think that's uh, my, my, my initial thought on that. Thank you. Blair? Well, well, it's true. I, I always said you get two actors in a room and you can set your stopwatch by how long you've heard of the phrase, how did you do, you know, whatever. So, yeah, I got an agent. Well, how did you do that? Or, yeah, I, I, I booked a job. How did you do that? Or I met this cast director. Well, how did you do that? Everyone's looking for, like, the, the path. And I think Brian's right. There's, you know, there is no one specific path. I think there's principles, you know, to, to be followed and, uh, and, and understanding. I mean, a lot of times people ask us specifics about, you know, marketing. Uh, I, I know I'm supposed to send postcards, but uh, how often should I send them? And, you know, they're looking for the exact formula, and, and that gets tough because it's going to be different for everybody. But on the other hand, there are certain uh, principles of marketing that I think when actors understand them, 
sort of sheds a light and they understand, okay, well then I understand what marketing is and how it fits into my plan and what I'm doing. Um, I think for me, really what marketing it is, uh, what marketing is or what it can and be. And tell us the principles, that sounds good. Yeah, <laughs> what do you got? The principles of marketing. The um, principles of marketing, boy. Yeah, do, <laughs> uh, th it's, uh, I, there are, I, I'm an actor, I know, you know, it's um, one of them's. I, I just told Blair what the four P's that. of marketing was uh, about 20 minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> So we'll see if he remembers. Let's see we'll see. He this will but be he's my good. partner. I don't have to know them because he does. <laughs> so that's easy. Um, you guys know. You guys know this, right? Marketing specialist. I think there's six P's. I don't know. Oh, see, I'm not sure. There's two things have changed. I've heard so two and a half P's. Added two P's. There's last two point five <laughs> P's. They've added more P's. Um, no, okay, but Brian, so tell us the four P's. I'm dying to know what okay, are these so four P's of marketing. So in traditional what marketing, the four P's of marketing are product, um, price. Um, uh, promotion and placement. Um, nice. so, y so you're the product, right? And we're, if, we're, if we're applying this directly to actors, you are the product. You need to understand what that means in, in terms of the placement. Like, so for all the other actors, let's take me for example, because I'm selfish. Um, the <laughs> I'm your typical Midwestern dude, right? I'm not a bad looking guy, but I'm not exactly a leading man. I think we'll go, you know, sort of in that range right there. Um, uh, people don't take their children across the street when they see me on the sidewalk. But as if, I, as if I'm marketing myself as an actor and I just say I'm an actor, that is not a very good marketing message, right? So um, price doesn't apply as much to you guys. Um, in, I mean, it does. It matters. It absolutely matters. <laughs> don't get me wrong. Um, but uh, the thing that um, the last two Ps, uh, placement um, and uh, promotion, um, placement is the, the who, what, why, where, and why. W what do I do, and, and when, and how do I do it? Um, and then, um, uh, and then promotions has to do with um, you, know, you know the the. I've got I've completely lost the things. Product. It's all right. Forget it. It's a bad call. It's my idea. <laughs> <laughs> That's four. Right, so there's two more. Um, um, and then right. there may be six. There may be six P's. So what else you got? Okay. So I'm going to lay it out differently. All right. It, it, it follows what he's saying, but I have a more, kind of a different, more practical approach. Because anytime someone's like, gives me, you know, that marketing speak, like, I always like go crazy because I'm like, oh no, the four P's, what if I can't remember them? So here's my take, okay? Really simple. So raise a hand. Raise your hand if right now you have a business card, okay? And who doesn't have a business card? Do it, let's do it that way. Okay. For those that don't, you need to get one. And let me tell you why. It only costs 50 bucks. You can get them at Kinko's. doesn't cost a lot of money, probably less. If I meet you, the, the gentleman right there, and I meet you, we're at a party, and I like you, and you tell me you're an actor, and you don't know this, but I happen to know Paul, and I happen to know he's looking for something, and I'm like, hey, how can I reach you? What are you going to do? Are you going to write this on the back of a check? A sticky? <laughs> something out of your pocket? I don't even know. Someone else's business card? Or you're going to do the worst, which is to say, I don't have any cards, so you know what? I'll email you. Guess what? You've lost the sale, mm -hmm. okay? So first thing, easy business card. And on your business card, and I don't know, how many in here have their address on their business card? Your mailing, your like home address, okay? Never, just checking. A Couple people are like, yeah. You would be surprised how many times I get resumes from people that they're posting on the web from women, especially that have their apartment numbers and their address, you do not need to put it. Okay, so name, cell, and the number. Not your home, but your cell number and your email. And that's all you need. Okay? And if anybody here has, how many people here have Hotmail? Okay? You might want to think about changing that. Get a little bit out of there. I'm just telling you. You, you might change AOL as well. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Gmail, something else, URL. Well, Ma Madeline, that's actually a really good point. So, so Madeline, wh when an actor comes to you, and there's so much competition, there's so many good actors out there, what do you do? How do you help facilitate that actor, you know, standing out? Sure. So just to finish up on the bit, someone asked why about the Hotmail. Because, I mean, you tell me, Anna, isn't Hotmail a bit dated? Indeed. I mean, I think yeah. that uh, what I was going to add to this is that it has to do in general with just digital media. Um, you, have to, you have to kind of appear, uh, I would say that there's a, a, just to add to the P's, you know, presentation. Um, you know, ha once again, show of hands, how many people have a Facebook page? Right. You know, so who, who doesn't? Right. Who, who doesn't have a Facebook page? The well, same you guy should, that doesn't have the cards. You should probably get one. <laughs> <this guy. laughs> Sometime, uh, for, for a while on the street team, I would get people to sign up for their email, uh, they, you know, for our newsletters with their email addresses. And some people would say, oh, I don't have an email. 
And I would say you should probably get one. <laughs> like so, yeah, you definitely. know, I mean, you need to appear uh, relatively savvy. Savvy, relevant, current. And for anybody that has Hotmail, the only reason I say that is the little things that matter. I mean, you'd be surprised. It is just the, you know, you ask Jeff, like, why and does it matter and all these things? Because there, Malcolm Gladwell, I'll sum it up. Malcolm Gladwell wrote a book uh, a few years back called Blink. I don't know if you guys read it. If you didn't, I'll spare you from reading it. But basically what he said is, I made up my mind about each of you in less than 30 seconds. You see someone, you size them up. There's this crazy thing that goes on in your brain, and you've already made your opinion. Casting so, directors do that in 10 seconds. <laughs> Three times you're, you're able to shave off 20 seconds of the, uh, the normal course. <laughs> but, Paul, that's actually a great question because you are the buyer. So ultimately when everyone is marketing, whether it's coming from the talent, uh, you know, or from an agent to you, or from a manager to you, you are the decision maker. So what type of marketing impacts you in, in your decision making process during that first 10 seconds? Well, in terms of, of marketing, I think it's really important that actors also have a website as well, too. You know, I just finally did one myself, and I think that it's important to have there that you can showcase your work with. Um, and, and I, you know, it's, I welcome I only have so much time to see so many new actors for pre-reads. And then I have so little time to really cast a project, usually as we all do, and callbacks um, are, are fast, and we, especially during pilot season, we move, we move really quickly. So we rely not only on agents and managers, but also actors to provide something that I've been seeing a little bit more of. There's something called, I think they're calling it a pitch video. Okay, let's talk about that. How does that look? Where, where actors identify two or three types of roles that they're most identified or most strongly relate to playing. And if they can get their hands on the, um, the sides of a project, or, and most actors can, most actors have some sort of access to break down somehow or actors access. And I don't mind when actors send me directly through email or through uh, Facebook or through um, agents and managers, preferably. Uh, if they can't get in to read and there's an hour or two at night when I'm going through my emails and I see actors self-submit on certain projects and actually put themselves on tape for a project or have two or three different kinds of pitch videos which, which identify them Type-wise, because you guys should know what your brand is, as, as, and that's a whole, you know, that's a popular word right now, but it's true. If you guys understand what your brand is, and I can see your work, even if it's, if it's related, even remotely to what I'm doing, I sometimes find really good actors that I've never met before, because they've learned how to identify their brand, they've developed a pitch video, which is well shot, well lit, um, with a good reader, looks professional, and, and it's a catalog of two or three or four different videos which are sent out for particular projects, especially if they can't get into the room. And I think that's really important. It's really also important to target casting directors, producers, directors, writers that you admire, whose work you admire, whose projects that you, would, you see yourself appearing in. If you're a CW guy or girl, if you're an ABC family, if you're a if you're a, a you know a, a Sons of Anarchy type actor, you want to you are attracted to those sorts of casting directors, and you target those people gently, lovingly, without you know. <laughs> oh, make sure you know. gently, lovingly. Yes. Make sure everyone writes so, that down. Jeff. But you can do that, and I think we appreciate you know having the door cracked open and having you guys inobtrusively begin to to maybe go to a workshop. Get uh, introduce yourselves to us just so we know who you are because there are so many good actors who are not represented out there right now as well as they'd like to be. Well, well, I think I, you just said something that's so important and something that really kind of came to light uh, when I got to look at the breakdown system and how it works and actually kind of relates back to the question about okay. the first question about kind of marketing in general. When I actually when I saw the submission process, you said you have you know so little time to discover new actors. Uh, and and because you're going through casting the roles you have to cast in so little time, I didn't realize. You know, I, I've actually, and it's great as an actor. I've had the chance to look at casting directors' accounts on breakdowns and see how submissions come in, and see what 1,500, 1,700, 2,000 submissions for the bartender. Yeah, for, for, thank you. Yeah, 
I've seen what that looked like. I mean, you know, and that's wow. that's the depressing part. I mean, they, they come in on a casting director's screen. Um, they're they're two by two and a half, uh, and they're on a grid. And and for the one line role, the bartender, whatever it is. I mean, I've I've seen twenty three hundred submissions, and and these are coming in within an hour, two, three, couple hours. I mean, because they start coming in pretty, and depending on the project, TV moves a little faster than film. But when you see, so let's say fifteen hundred submissions. And then realize, and I had never done the math before, um, majority of the casting directors who use breakdown, and probably you can tell me how you schedule them, but they say the average is about an actor every 10 minutes, because you actually schedule the times the computer will set it up, you start it at 10, and it fills actors in 10, 10, 10, 20, 10, 30, whatever it may be. That's six actors an hour. That's it. And you know, if you're doing TV, and there's eight or 10 roles, and a producer wants to see callbacks day after tomorrow, you know, physically, how many actors can casting directors call in? It starts to become a time crunch thing, and I realize that for a lot of casting directors, their job is to pick, I don't know, 20, 30 actors out of a list of 1,500 and do it very quickly. So it makes a lot of sense that as, as these pictures are, are, are scrolling by, and I, Brian, you want to call it the NASCAR effect, okay. you know, they scroll by, that casting directors are going to be drawn to actors that they know that they've worked with, it makes sense. You, you know, I don't, you can't fault the casting director for it, especially because you know, casting directors are looking for people who are gonna do the job and do it well. So if a face goes by and you know that person, great. So you know, I realized then, oh, okay, if, and, and what we've had people you know, at, at, at breakdowns who call and complain and say, you know, hey, I, I submit myself on Actors Access every day and I never get a call. To which you have to ask the question, well, how often do you submit yourself to somebody who knows you? You know, how often do you submit yourself to somebody that you have a relationship with? And all the stuff that we've talked about so far is exactly that. It's building a relationship with a long-term relationship. And for me, that's where I realized, oh, I get it. Okay, companies have sales departments and they have marketing departments. And they do different things. Sales is make the sale, sign the contract, get the money. Submit myself, get the job, sign the contract, get the money. Marketing is the long-term. It's the building relationships, the, the five, the 10-year plan where I'm going to get to know casting directors so well that as their career grows, my career grows, and we, we, our career grows together over time. Uh, and, and realizing the distinction between those two, I started to realize, oh, okay, marketing is not just the random postcard. Well, and, and now with building the, a plan. With, with new media, I mean, Madeline, has you found, have you found that new media, Twitter, Facebook, et cetera, have totally changed how changed actors... Yep. Completely changed the game, right? Well, also, I got to add to something. When Paul was talking about the pitch video, you don't have to spend a lot of money on it, even though it's professionally done, which means that it shouldn't shake. You can do a lot of this stuff off of, off of an iPhone, and Anna will even go into a more. You can do this stuff inexpensively. It doesn't have to be crazy all out. It's more important that they see your work and that they get a sense of who you are. I would say absolutely. Uh, you know, you... You have to have the full package online. You know, I mean, you have to have a Twitter. If you don't have a Twitter, also get a Twitter. And as far as what we were saying about the email earlier, just to bring it back, um, absolutely. If you can, uh, if you can have the resources to get your own domain name or something that is very similar to your given name that you use at, in your in your craft, like .com or you know, like you know, your name .com. Um, or your name actor .com or something like that, and make sure all of you have all your social networks covered. Because what you were mentioning, you know, the short reels, that that's something that YouTube can like highly facilitate. And as long as you have all the links, you know, and again, I have to add, you have to think about the way that you're presenting yourself on these networks. You know, it's beyond just having the actual spots on the web. You have to sort of craft your uh, brand and your identity and of course there's some obvious ones like don't put crazy pictures of yourself you know drinking ridiculous things uh you know oh boy, upside down that's, that's on your, your vacation unless you know unless maybe, for some or unless you know the vodka anymore, company okay, is paying okay. you to do it or something like that but you know like i mean you know i these are lessons that you know uh people coming out of college right now i think are learning a lot but um but also, it's a you know, post it's Facebook world. Those pictures are always out there. Right, now. they're you out know? there forever. It's a whole, and just it's remember that. Hands. I mean, even if you take them there. down, once they're up, they're up. There's, they live in that blog. And one, one other quick note about the Twitter, the Twitter sphere. Um, you want to have a Twitter, even if you don't use it that much, just so that people inside Twitter can refer to you. Um, if you're not familiar using Twitter. Um, 
you know, that's fine. But you, if you have a link on your Twitter to a, another site that you do use more often, at least people can find and identify and discuss and post about you on Twitter, which, believe me, is something right. you want. Or follow people like Paul on Twitter. Follow these casting directors that you're referring to and become part of that community. And you can it's see all them about community on their vacations, upside down. And, and let me just, uh, I'll say something about YouTube. Or, uh, you know, when I'm talking about these, these sort of targeted videos, uh, dedicated sites are better, like Vimeo, I think, so that you, they're protected. Absolutely. You know, so you're not vulnerable out there and you're not posting all your stuff out on YouTube, which, which uh, you know, you want to save it for the people who you really want to target point. to. a great point. On Vimeo where it's password protected. Password protected, yep. right. And because it, there's so much noise out there and you want to just be really careful and specific about that. And, you know, you were mentioning about these 1,500 submissions. I tell you, you know, and you're right, I, I will bring in maybe... 20 or 30 out of that whole 1,500, how do you become one of those? Well, if I don't know you, then it would be really useful for you guys to have that little camera icon next to your picture. How many of you guys have a demo reel next to your picture? Wow. Would you stand up, sir? That, thank you. The guy without a Facebook. <laughs> um, no, you, he came through. He came through. Yeah. You We're need really to helping have him. That. I think that's really important because I won't even look anymore at or bringing in anyone that I don't know with a headshot anymore. And actually, uh, the uh, computer programs at Breakdowns, something else we learned, was uh, they're set up so that submissions, when they come in, are mixed randomly, uh, so that when casting directors click on show me everything I haven't seen, show me my unviewed, it'll randomly mix everything together so it levels the playing field with one caveat. Anything with a video clip attached goes first. Right. And guess what? That's what I look at, the first 200 or 300. If I don't know them, I'll look at 10 or 15 seconds of a video clip of a speed reel, a one-minute reel. And on the basis of that, because it's a 3D version of you, uh, it also shows me if you can act, if there's a sense of humor, if there's a personality, much beyond just the 1D one, you know, one, uh, version of, uh, of, a, of a, an, Im an image that's just a picture. Uh, on that subject, um you know, it used to be, the agents tend to like a, re a reel, right? Because so, they want to see a body of work. But um, uh, most casting directors that I've talked to would rather see clips that are relevant to whatever it is that you're submitting for. Um, and so it is possible to break up your reel into, uh, in, into individual clips. Um, and I uh, recommend um, uh, doing that. Um, and then when you submit, submit with things that match. Um, because marketing is about trying to draw a, dot, a short dotted line between the, the problem and the solution. And you're the solution. And so, um, so you want to make it as easy as possible for these guys to do their work. So, um, so if, if, if you're submitting for a, a comedic role and the first three things on your demo reel are horror film, uh, you know, dramatic drama thing, how, you know, how long do you watch clips? Maybe 20, 30 seconds, long enough to, you know, if you're lucky, long enough to find out if you look like you're supposed to look like and if you can move and talk. And so shorten your clips down so they're about you, not about the, the, the montage, the, the, the wide sweeping you know, landscape shot with music in the background, that they don't start on the other person who's in that scene. C cut those things down so the, the clip is about you. Don't make Madeline. it a Terrence Malick movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, Madeline, no. You like him, but. I, I want to just go back to something that Paul said about the website. Websites can be expensive. Again, I want to just tell you, you don't need to do an entire crazy convoluted flash website. You can do something in one page. It's called a splash page or a home page. It has your picture. It's got a little bio. It's got the work that you've done. And this, these things don't cost a lot of money. The major main thing, though, is you have to have a presence there. So if Paul or anybody is looking for you, that it's somehow you're legitimatized on the web. So you need that one splash page. But you don't have to spend a lot of money and go to a lot of effort and time and trouble and make yourself crazy. And also, if you do those do-it-yourself home things and it looks do-it-yourself, that's not good either. I have that's a question I want to throw out to the panel. Um, it's interesting. We're talking about technology, and not just for actors, but in entertainment generally. It's changed everything, right? Um, I was at a, a panel. Um, it, it was a panel uh, on film finance, and, and one of the people said, in order to make a film 100 years ago, you needed... 30 acres of land in the San Fernando Valley. You needed an army of very specialized craftsmen. You needed to have your own you know, team of actors that you contractually had lock, stock, and barrel. And then you probably needed to own your own movie chain to actually show the movies in once, you know, once it was complete. Now, 
to, to, to create a movie, you need, you know, 30 grand worth of equipment, you know, five guys in, a, in an office in Santa Monica and, and four good actors, and you can do it. And for distribution, you just need an internet connection, and you put it in there and it goes out. And what I find on the transactional front, you know, kind of, you know, macro, looking at a bunch of different transactions, is what a destabilizing effect that has had on show business in general. Uh, studios are disempowered because, you know, they have so much overhead that the only movies they can make that really make it, you know, worth covering that overhead have to end in the word man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it has to be Batman, Spider-Man, you know, uh, Superman. Um, so, so it's had really a destabilizing effect. My question that I want to throw out to the, to the panel, um, and it's somewhat political, but let's think about it. You know, I know like kind of the way to get to the casting director back in the old days was you have to have the perfect agent. You have to have the perfect agent who's juiced in. Do you find now that with kind of technology, you don't need the perfect agent anymore? And that they're, like having a great agent is great, but there are other ways now to kind of reach the end zone. Like how has that impacted the role of the agent on the talent side? Well, I, I think it's still important to have a, a good agent okay. on your team and a good manager. However, uh, you can now help your agent or manager <laughs> promote you and pitch you. You know, used to, we used to feel so powerless about that, or actors used to, and say, well, my agent's not getting me out, or, right. you know, um, they're not pitching me, or my pictures aren't working. And now you can go out and create your own content, your own webisode series, which I know people are doing all the time, three to five minutes. Wow, that's perfect. How much attention span do we have anyway, right? Um, short films, student films, indie films, you can provide content for your, you don't have to wait around for that CSI guest star in other words, to come around for you. You can provide, provide your own content that you produce, you direct, you write, you create, and give it to your agent, a piece of that to your agent, and then all of a sudden they have something they can pitch you for. They, they have a tool that they can use that they never had before. And I think that's really empowering for you, and it gives you guys something to do also in your downtime just to create a certain creative, just to have some creativity in your life yeah. while you're waiting for that audition because we've been so used to having actors complain about not being able to get out there and 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 there's been this whole sense of, of um, frustration. Now you guys can stop procrastinating or waiting around and actually take control of the new media that you've got um, available to you or go to the 48 hour film festivals or the short film festivals. That's where I'm seeing a lot of new talent. I was at the Palm Springs International Short Film Festival Okay, and I found that I was watching one of the panels and I found you know there were marketing people there and Fox Digital was there and I was getting this whole education about what's going on there in new media and one of the guys said on the panel he said you know um, I, 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 getting a letter from someone or getting you know an actor calling me or a producer or writer calling me about something you know they're just another letter another person who wants to get into the digital business but if you actually create something, if you produce something, and you submit it, and it becomes something that's entered in a festival, guess what? I'm calling them. Right. So I have to add, there's one more element. So now you've created this thing, and you know how you said you'll send it to your manager or whatever? No. Post this thing on the web, get a following, get some excitement around this, and then you'll find that's what builds your own community. I know of certain actors that have gotten roles because they can go in and say, you know what, I've got 25,000 Twitter followers. People, when they hire actors, like to know that they come with that. Because at the end of the day, when that film, short, television show is being marketed, if you, the actor, have a following, it makes it much easier for the studio or the network to publicize it. Because all they have to do is tap into your community. They already like you. They've liked you on Facebook. They follow you on Twitter. They have some virtual relationship with you. So I would just add to that. You know, that's a, that. that's a great point. I, and I'm, you know, I, I don't underestimate that too because I see that a lot. I, I don't want you guys hiring people in India to, to tap to get your star meter up to 53. <laughs> um, it only we see some of that going on. Months, so. You know, a producer will come to me and say, well, look at this person. They're number 250 on star meter. And I said, they spent a lot of money, you know, in... Um, in India, um, uh, getting people to do that <laughs> for click, them. Click, 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 click. Exactly. So, uh, but I think that's really important that producers are are asking about that. Directors, and it's a little baffling to me because you know we still look for talent. Are they an actor? Can they? Well, act? you know what? Actually, I think let's get a little psychological for a moment, mm -hmm. and then what we're going to do is kind of get into more of a 
kind of uh, how to, kind of more to how to create your own marketing plan with these experts. But psychologically, like what you've just said, is, I think it's a really interesting point. Because on one hand, it's almost two jobs in one to be an actor, right? Because there's the craft, and there's actually being a great actor, and you know, finding the laughs in the funny scene, and finding the tear, you know, finding the tears in the, in the you know dramatic scene. And I, I imagine that there's a feeling where that should be enough. To be really good at that, that should be sufficient to get you know to get you the, the appropriate role. And then when there's this second job of having to market yourself, it's very different in the sense of you're not marketing Coca-Cola where it's an it's just an object. You're marketing yourself, and when people don't respond to that product, you know it's it's psychologically how do you deal with that, and how do you deal with the balance of having to sell yourself and not lose integrity as an artist? So it's a big one, but I'd throw it out there. Well, you're talking branding, you know, and there's a lot of uh, different words floating around about that now, whether you call it image or branding or type. Um, the one that resonated with me at a casting director asked me one time, you know, what what stories do you tell better than others? What stories are in your DNA? Because as it relates to marketing and as it relates to my career here in this town, when it, when it boils down to it, in between jobs, in between gigs, my job is to find the people in town who tell the same stories that I do and build relationships with them. And that's uh, not an easy process. I, you know, going back to building your own content, I think you know, I've learned, the more that I work, the more I learned about the stories that I tell, the more I learned about me and that translates into whatever that brand may be. I think you learn a lot about that when you start to do your own content. You start to find what stories move you, what stories do you want to tell, what stories resonate with you, what scripts seem to just click just to get inside your DNA. Um, when you, to me, when, when you think about it that way, um, it becomes less of this daunting task than, than trying to market a brand. It's, you realize that no, I'm, I mean, you know, we're all freelance storytellers in this town. That's what we do. And it took me a while for it to sink in, but when I realized that casting directors, producers, directors, me, we're all freelance storytellers, and we're all looking to work together to tell stories, um, I realized that, you know, instead of like looking at a casting director as that sort of mystical gatekeeper, you know, who has the key, uh, and Wait, I'm, they're and not. I'm, I thought they were. We and I'm, please, please, dear God, just let me in. Uh, it, it's not. It can't be that hierarchy. It has to be. It has to be more peer to peer. So when I realize, you know, I have my stories, and I want to get to know the people who tell those same stories, then it makes marketing such not such a daunting task, but more of a career long, you know, process where I'm meeting people in town and working with them. Uh, for what it's worth, it also changes the air in the room a little bit. I think when you go into audition, because now instead of you know, this person you're trying to please, uh, if you can walk in and say, you know, it's gr great to meet you. I know what you're doing because I do my homework and I know who you are. And uh, let me give you my story. This is what I got. This is how I would do it. And if you can use it, great. And if not, that's cool because you and I are not going anywhere and we'll work together down the road. It's going to make a ton of difference. Um, so in that case, that, that marketing doesn't become that, that daunting task. It's more of this career-long evolution of getting to know people and working with them over time. Okay. Madeline? What you said about storytelling is so exactly right. So I'm gonna tell you my biggest marketing secret right now today. Write this down, it's gonna be good. Write this down, this is really good. Remember that book, The Secret? Forget it. <laughs> I, remember that? You heard it I here first. Every night George Clooney would call me, he never called me. That doesn't work. This, what I'm gonna tell you, works. But this requires, uh, but in order to, to uh, explain this, it requires someone from the audience, okay? So who here would, uh, and someone kind of close up, okay? You in the burgundy shirt. Here's this thing, I meet you, I'm in line, we're at the academy, we're at a screening, and you're in front of me at the bar. And how do you introduce yourself? Starts with the handshake, and how do you, what do you say? And speak loudly, because they're videotaping, they're taping this. Hi, Jacob, good evening, may I help you find something? Okay, <laughs> holy, okay. I don't even know what P that is, all right. <laughs> Okay, here's the thing. Now, what I meant, maybe I wasn't clear on this. I'm meeting you for the first time and you have to introduce yourself. This is your story. Nobody else. Everybody in this room has their own story. So you would say, I'm such and such. I'm an actor. I'm a working actor. I'm not. Uh, currently, you may, because you want to explain to the person that you're meeting exactly who you are so that the structure of this is present, past, future. Present. Who you are right now. Okay? I'm Paul Blah Blah, I'm a casting director, I have my own company, I've had it for three years, I currently do Blah Blah. Prior to that, 
I also was an actor myself. I did this, da 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 da. The reason that you do present is because people in Los Angeles in the entertainment business have very short attention spans. So you got to hook them in right in the beginning. When we were going down the row and we were talking about ourselves, and one of you guys said, I started off and first did so and so, I think. Remember that? Start with present, who you are now. I want to know who you are because I want to know if I should talk to you or if I should go and get a drink. <laughs> then I want to know the past. What did you used to do? Because now I want to size you up and figure out, are you a phony or do we know anybody in common or do you really have some something going on? So then I stay a little bit longer. Remember I told you about 30 seconds? Okay. Future. When you go back going, going full circle, remember you're talking about sales? The ask. You always end with the ask. So it might be like, and now I'm looking for a role um, because I have, I just finished this um, short that I just finished and I'm looking for distribution or uh, my partner and I are in, we act and we write or I'm doing a comedy thing. I'd love for, you know, whatever. You end with the ask. So present, past, future. And that is my secret. All right. There All right. we go. Thank you. Now, r real quick, back to social media for a moment because Anna, I know you're an expert Indeed. on this interweb. <laughs> Yeah. Tell us an awesome war story, like a way you've seen somebody really utilize the interweb oh, absolutely. And to, to market um, themselves and, and do something great. Well, okay, the LA Weekly, for example, every year we uh, have the web awards there. And uh, I remember uh, we, we get a lot of sort of unsolicited submissions uh, uh, for different, you know, just all over, we get fa maybe, you know, some dozen odd Facebook messages just from total strangers every right. day. And I came across one um, series of shorts, uh, actually, that that really struck me, um, that was about a, a woman who was an actor in Los Angeles um, named Teal, uh, who was in a wheelchair. And the, the short, um, the sh it was uh, webisodes, I think she had three of them up there, and uh, it, they were all funny, short, um, I think three minutes tops, uh, sort of mini sitcoms about how, what it's like to be an actor trying to get parts when you are confined to a wheelchair. And it, I was completely sucked in. I watched all of them, and I submitted her immediately. Uh, I nominated her for a Web Award for Best Web Series. Oh, wow, that's great. So, you know, and I mean, that was something that I, you know, nine times out of ten, I cannot look at. It's the same thing, you know, I mean... We are just super fast paced over there, and the time there's only so many minutes in the day. You know, I mean, it's it's literally like you know every moment is blocked out. But once in a while, something um, will make an impression where you know it's just very authentic. I, I would say from a branding point of view too, like yeah. you know you know get your friends to follow you on Twitter first, and then get your family and well maybe your family, your mom, you know. You, but you don't want your mom to like every single thing, you know, you're gonna, people are going to make the connection eventually, although she can like some things, I'm sure, but, you know. Um, but, you know, then um, address trends. Basically, just stay up on what is being talked about on the social medias uh, in that very day. Uh, you know, I mean, that's another thing, is persistency on, on the web is important, um, I would say, if you're going to get noticed. Uh, there's a couple of, what's her name, Megan Aram. She she also was, a, she started out on Twitter, I think, and she's a comedian, and she just tweets the most hilarious short one-liners. Um, and she got noticed and actually won a LA Weekly Web Award that way. It's like, I mean, it's a small recognition, but, you know, it, you start to build that stuff up, people hear about you, um, and even if you can, you know, as long as what you're providing uh, is truly you, um, I think that, I mean, clearly as an actor, you're <laughs> when you're in your That's roles, great. you're gonna wanna be, uh, you know, not entirely yourself. But when you're, when you're presenting yourself as a brand, I mean, you know, eventually you're gonna get 25,000 follow followers and you're gonna get that, that blue verified check mark, um, you know, and, and you're gonna be not doing your own tweets anymore at that point probably, but you know, you're, you're gonna, um, you just sort of like continuously cycle yourself into the news feed um, with what you're doing and positivity, but maybe with an authenticness where you're not overselling, Sincerity. you know, a soft sell, yep. I guess is what the word would be, where you're, you're reaching out in a way that um, you actually genuinely yourself would be interested in what you're presenting. Um, and I think that that, that helps uh, lend a level of uh, sanity maybe to the process. Um, the soft sell to, is a well, good point. 
That's a really good point. In the whole story in your introduction, if it looks like you're too much, you know, asking for something or it, it's it's too much too Come soon, on down. So it's great. You know, like, you know, you know, you know exactly. we've all heard that a hundred thousand times. So well, well marketing is, is more than just promotion. It's more than just hey, me, me, me. You know, actors would fall into the trap of come look at my website, bring me in, read me, look at my reel, all about me. And if, if marketing is, well, the way I look at it, relationship marketing for actors, if it is about building relationships, then it's got to be a two-way street. Yes, you want to invite people to look at your work to get to know you. But, you know, out there in the, in the real world when people from companies meet, you know, at conventions or wherever, they, they have the business card and they say, you know, hi, I make widgets and what do you do? I make gadgets and, hey, let's change cards and maybe we can work together. Actors need to do that too. You know, uh, getting to know casting directors, totally. producers. I think there's as much about getting to know the, the people you want to build relationships with. Um, it is something actors miss. I mean, I, I've got friends who get all excited because they're going in to read for, you know, I don't know, pick a show. I'm going in to read for Modern Family. Great. Who are you going to meet? Uh, I'm going in for Modern Family. <laughs> no, no. Who are you going to meet? And more importantly, what else do they do? What are they working on? You know, um, I've gotten auditions by walking into a room and saying, thanks so much for calling me and I appreciate it. And by the way, I saw you guys picked up a new pilot. Congratulations, that's awesome. And the casting director turns to me and says, you know, I didn't think we'd get it. I'm so excited. We're up against another production, another that's casting a great office. Point. Right. Great and, point. And, great point. And, I, you know, I, it's a new producer and I'm so excited. And now all of a sudden, instead of me, like, nervous about the audition, now I'm just, like, talking shop with a peer. And, and it, it's made all the difference in the world. And, and getting to know them, I, I think it, it has to be that, that two-way street, which is knowing who you are, knowing who you're talking to, and starting that relationship that goes both ways. I would also want to add about, um, you guys have probably seen on social networks, like uh, Kickstarter campaigns, yeah. Indiegogo campaigns for maybe a lot of small biz, uh, small bi you know, it, sometimes I, I find they're often for movies, small yeah. independent movies. And I think that there's, a, there's a, a time and a place for them, and it's all about striking a balance. Like, as you grow your network, uh, you want to support the other people in your network, you know? And you share, uh, like, for on, on Facebook, you will share, like, the uh, whatever posts that your friend, who's also an actor, put up. You know, you, you start to circulate it. Um, so that you're doing people favors, you know, like on social media. So you're helping your friends um, and your network expand that way because then, you know, their network will see you and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so I think that as far, you know, anytime you have a friend who's working on a project, you know, support them on social media, retweet that, you know, show, put up a link, you know, see, see what, um, if you can get some of your friends to like it because it's only going to, provide a stronger base uh, down the road. It's really a really great conversation that's happening here because I think you could actually connect what you were both saying to actual acting. I mean, you, you, when you listen to another actor, when you give to another actor in a scene, you get so much more as well too. When it's not just all about you, we sense that and it feels it's a very sort of selfish approach um, that we stereotype actors as having, where it is all about you all the time. And of course, it is. But there's a way of doing that, that I think when you include other people in and give of yourself to other people in the collaborative process, it just makes you so much better, I think. In, in not only in your acting work, but in your professional marketing and, and branding as well, too. And be current about the business. You're in a profession. You're an actor in the entertainment business. So if there's something that's major going on, whether it's um, uh, whatever happens to be going on that day, and whatever websites you read or print publications, know what's going on. To exactly your point, when you show up on that set of Modern Family, know the big stories that are happening. Be current watching movies, be current watching TV, watch a lot of things, because you have to support your industry, and you're a part of it. And you love it, but you can't just be so singularly focused that you're, you know, I remember once I was on a panel and I asked, you know, what does everybody read? And so all the hands went up, you know, we read this, we read that. And then one guy goes, well, I don't read. I, I read a lot of self-help help books. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, really, <laughs> you got to get out TV. there. That's really frightening. Those are okay. But that was me you were talking about. <laughs> oh, that's right. Did they work? I don't know. Well, you know, I, I think... 
one of my one of my all time favorite stories about being aware of, of what's going on from an actor's point of view uh, is a buddy of mine who went in last year to uh, read for a co star part on a TV show. Um, little nice little part, uh, nothing huge, but he knew he was meeting the casting office for the first time. Um, so um, he's a is a friend of mine. He's one of the beta testers for casting about. So he's got his subscription. He went on to just memorize the names and minimum do that. Memorize the names of the people in the room when you go in and, and meet them. But he was smart. He did his research. And he noticed that the associate casting director for the TV show, and the person he's probably going to read with, because it's a small co-star part, so probably going to read with the associate, um, was also the lead casting director on a low-budget film that was shooting in Pittsburgh that summer. Um, and we have a, like a notes section you can actually read, you know, shooting in Pittsburgh. And he, he realized that, and he's from Pittsburgh. So all it took was, and it done in a very professional way. All he did is he went in and, and said, hey, thanks so much for bringing me in. It's really nice to meet you guys. I haven't read for you before. It's great. Um, nice to meet you. They did the audition. And before he leaves, he said, thanks again. And by the way, I, I saw that you're casting your own film out in Pittsburgh. Congratulations. That's great. The casting director said, yeah, it's my first time casting my own film. I'm so excited. And he said, well, you'll love it. I'm from Pittsburgh. It's a great city. You'll love it. Her eyes lit up. And she said, really? All right, can you be a local hire? subtext here, can you help me, right? And he said, yeah, absolutely. My parents are there. I'd love to do that. She said, great. A week later, she called him back in, read the film, spent three weeks in Pittsburgh, living with his parents, shooting the film. Now, a couple things happened there. Obviously, he's got another film on his resume. He got to spend three weeks at home shooting the film. But his relationship with that casting director is locked in. Now, if he does his homework and he follows her career and stays in touch and says, hey, I'm doing this, and by the way, I saw you just got another film. Or you just got promoted to CD on the show. Or your show just got picked up for another season. Or your office just picked up a new pilot. Whatever it is. That can be a career-long relationship right there. And it's simply being informed. Knowing what's going on. Because, and that's, marketing is not just mass mailing postcards. You know, it's much more than that. Uh, and what, what we always say, yeah. it's, it's actually much less than that. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the mass point. mailing thing, we've been, we've been harping on the mass mailing thing for a long time. I started saying it's like driving down the 405 and just throwing your headshots out the window <laughs> and hoping that it sticks in somebody's windshield and they happen to be a casting director. So, you know, be, be smarter than that. I mean, you know, let, let's face it. You don't need to know every casting director in town. You don't need to be best friends with every casting director in town. If you've got solid professional relationships with, let's say, 10 casting directors who are doing the kind, same kind of things you're doing, telling the same kind of stories you, you tell, you're going to have a great career. And, uh, and so I would recommend to people that instead of thinking of this whole town as this giant place where there's so many people and I have to meet them all, find the ones that are doing the same kind of thing you're doing, and instead of just meeting them once and never, them never hearing from you ever, ever again, you, uh, you know, stay in touch with them. Let them know you're still in town, that you didn't move back point. to Iowa. Um, in marketing, they call it the rule of seven. It's this idea that it takes seven impressions of a brand before people are ready to make a purchase decision. If you meet a casting director for the first time and you never, they never hear from you ever again, they're going to assume that you left town. Uh, yeah, I think that's a very good point, and I'll throw that out to the panel. Um, how important is it, you know, through the through the use of traditional schmoozing and internet schmoozing to develop your own gang of like-minded people? I mean, how many times have we seen like Tim Burton will cast the same actors in the film or back in the old, you know, it was, it was um, you know, Scorsese would always cast De Niro and, and yeah. uh, you know, Harvey Keitel. How important is it to form your own gang? I'm, I'm by no means am I, you know, a name actor at all, but I've I work enough yet, to make yet. my insurance and support my family, and 99% uh, and of the work I get is from casting directors who I've already worked with before, who know uh, me. Yeah, absolutely, and I think, you know, it's, it, it's a relatively... Nice to meet you, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, ask him what he's doing. Ask him what he's doing. Ask him what he's doing. So what are you doing now, Paul? <laughs> How's it going? It's a, um, it's, it's a relatively... It's a safe business, I think, and we, you know, because of the money... The, of how, how expensive this is. So we, we tend to want to gravitate toward the people that we you know, trust. that we've you worked trust. with before, that we trust, that we right. like. You know, most of the jobs I've ever, if I had to go in and meet on a project, chances are I wouldn't get it. The, the, the jobs that I point. end up getting are the ones with the relationships with the producers and directors that I know who pick up the phone and call me. And it's, it's I can count on one hand 
uh, the meetings that I've taken with people that I've never met before who don't have a relationship with me, and I'm just another casting director. Maybe I, could, I should be better and get better at that, and I probably <laughs> will and should. But it's about those relationships, and it is a process. It is kind of a long road to take, but you start by targeting those people that you really find that you have a certain kinship with and create that kind of relationship over time where they feel that there is a two-way street going there, and, and we need you as much as you need us. Well, you're, I mean, you're presenting us to producers and directors and more or less saying, I vouch, you know, at callbacks, I vouch for these five actors. You know, they can, they can do the role, pick the one that best serves your story. And if, and if we're not stepping up, it's, it's reflecting poorly on, on you, you know, and so it makes sense that, you know, you're bringing in the, the ones you can, you can trust, the ones that you're gonna work with. Um, so, there's a, you guys go to a lot of the SAG screenings? Right? So my husband, he does a lot of moderating for the SAG screenings, Pete Hammond. I don't know if you guys know. Yeah? A little shout out there. Keep it in the family. He's doing one tonight, actually. And I just thought of this as you were saying this. So I go to a lot of his screenings, and after the screening, I always go up to say hi to him. And always, in a SAG screening, SAG members come up to the people on the panel. And it is so important that uh, I just want to emphasize this because I see this a lot where you're so excited to meet the person that you'll be like, oh, I'm so-and-so and this is what I do. And it's, it's a little much sometime for the person that is there. More importantly is if you, going back to what you said, if you were to say, hey, I really enjoyed your performance and it becomes about them because it makes them relax a little bit because they're afraid you're going to be asking them something and put them in an awkward position or God forbid you hand them a script or something like that and it's just an inappropriate time to do that. But one thing that I wanted to mention is it's about gratitude and saying thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for inspiring me. You somehow integrate the word thank you into your, uh, your introduction, the way that you do, and, and then you go into the great introduction about yourself and who you are. And then when you follow up with a note, if it's appropriate to say you've enjoyed meeting you or thank you for doing the panel or whatever it is, that community that you build, that's how you start to build it. Because I know a lot of you may be like, well, I don't have a gang, or I don't have really a community, or I don't really know these people. You know, it just starts one to one to one. And you'd be surprised. I met a woman that was a SAG member when I did a panel about two months ago, and afterwards she wrote me a note, thanks, I enjoyed what you said, and I'm friends with her today. I just saw her like two days ago, and I never would have met her, but she came up, and by email, because a lot of times phone calls are a little much, and sometimes the one-on-one -on -one is a little much, but when you email the person after, and I can read that on my own time and respond accordingly, it makes all the difference. Mm -hmm. yep. I think, you know, the thing, we talked earlier about sales versus marketing, and uh, it's an important distinction here as well. Um, sales is, you know, is about asking for a specific job. Marketing is about building a long-term relationship. Um, it doesn't happen in one day. I mean, most of us tonight met about five minutes before we walked out on stage. And, uh, and I like all these folks, but I don't know them all that well. And we will, do, you know, we are all starting a, a relationship that may continue and may, you know, et cetera. But I would, you know, do, we live in a town where there's like, you know, you air kiss with people and now we're best friends. And that, that's kind of the culture of the whole thing. But marketing relationships are long-term relationships. I mean, um, Blair, I'll let you tell the story, but Blair was recently cast in a project from a woman that he met 14 years ago. Yeah. In New York. Uh, yeah, Carol Goldwasser and I met in New York. She called me in and I read for a pilot and then a second pilot and then, then I moved to L.A. And then found out later that she had moved to L.A. and, uh, and, and sent a note, you know, welcome to L.A. and, and you know, uh, kept in touch with her about my career and also followed her career as well because uh, I think it does go both ways um, with, you know, with messages very much about like there are certain casting directors I would love to talk with, but frankly, they don't need me. They don't, you know, I, I don't sing. Lee does not yet. need me. Yes, so, they don't no. need you yet. So, you know, and, and it's not just, it's not sending the message, hey, bring me in, because, and too many actors, I think, do that. How many postcards you get that are either blank or just, dear casting director, please consider me for anything you're doing. Um, <laughs> subtext, I'm desperate. Um, so, but, but instead, you know, with, with Carol following her career, and she was doing some Disney shows, and I had done some kid shows, and hey, I just saw you picked up a new show, and I've done that kind of work. Maybe we can work together. So last year, she... She brought me in. It was 14 years after we originally wow. met. I, wow. I walked in the door, and I opened the door. She looked up and goes, "Say again." You must have made a real impression. Well, I opened the door, and she, she looked at. She goes, "Oh my God, we're both old." <laughs> <laughs> Which you know, and I said, "Yes, we are, Carol. Good to see you again. How you been?" Yeah, you know, but it's great.
right, because now what she's saying is, look, I, I recognize, you know, you and I have a history, and we've both gone on, and now I'm doing this, and you've done your work, and, and you know, we've kept in touch, and now our paths are crossing, uh, uh, and I had a great time on the set, but, you know, it was a great, it was a great gig, and, and Carol and I could talk about it, and, you know, our relationship will continue um, 14 years in the making. That's great. Uh, you know. Well, I think, I think we've got a lot of great, you know, kind of big picture ideas. Um, you know, everything from the empowerment of technology and how you don't need to ask permission anymore. Right. You have, you know, your friends, you have a camera, you know, your friend wrote it, your other friend's directing it, you're in it, whatever it is, you don't need permission to create. And, and also, I think the nice thing about the internet is, you know, it also, you know, maybe in addition to acting, maybe you're a writer too, you know? Maybe you're a director, and this is a way to, t to try it out with, with not a tremendous amount of risk. And also the notion, I think, came through of actually caring about the buyer, ostensibly. Caring about the other side. N not just, not only viewing the casting director as someone who will buy you or not buy you, but, a but actually is a human being who has a life and have things that they're passionate about and, you know, and their concerns. And also the importance of having a gang because, just for, t the, just for the sake of time. If, you're, if you have to cast a, a project or if your friend's directing a project, and they right, put the cast together, you don't need to say, oh, did I, oh, who are you? Oh, sorry. Hi. I talk so much, I think, hello? Oh, we're good, okay. Uh, you know, and also from a time perspective. Um, so what I'd like to do briefly is just go, go, go down the line, and if, if each of the panel members could kind of say one big picture as an actor when you're kind of creating your marketing plan, this is you know, my big advice to you. And then after that, we're gonna actually look at some technology from our friends. That's uh, really fantastic. Uh, but first, let's go through the line and then we'll see some technology. And uh, yeah. For, from, uh, from castingabout.com. So, so I've already said, I've already said really what I think is the biggest thing here, but I, I talk a lot about relationship marketing. And you know, there's a lot of different types of marketing, um, but, but understanding that you're building relationships with people I think is the, the biggest thing um, that you can really um, get a handle on. And as you're thinking about your strategy, what am I going to do? Uh, understanding those relationships and how you cultivate those relationships, how you develop those relationships, how you keep those relationships alive, I just think is going to be the biggest part of what makes a difference for your career. Great. I, I would say do what you can to lose that idea, which is so easy for actors to fall into, of, of the hierarchy, of where the wannabes, they're the gatekeepers, and, and we need to impress them. Do what you can to lose that. Realize you're, you're, you're here because you want, you're a pro. You want to be a pro. Uh, know what stories you tell. Find people in town who tell those same stories and realize that it may take a while, but over time, you're going to work with them. And do what you can to build a relationship. And this is going to be staying aware of what those people are doing, identifying who they are, building your target list, keeping track of what they're doing, and looking for ways that you can help them. Again, it's not just about you. It's not please bring me in, but it's here's how I can help you. Casting directors need actors. They need actors who tell certain stories. If you're that person, then you per can perhaps help them. They can help your career, and it's that proverbial win-win. Uh, and when we start thinking along those lines, I think it'll change how you market yourself. It will take some of the mystery out of what am I supposed to say. Uh, and, it, and it'll change, I think, what you do in the room. You know, when you start to look at yourself on that kind of peer level and, and look for those people that you know you're going to work with over time. Awesome. Anna? Uh, yeah. I would just say have all your bases covered. Uh, know which uh, and all of the social media networks that are out there and make sure you at least are represented on all of them uh, in, a, in a good light. Uh, make sure that, you know, you've got your Facebook page and that it's professional and that you've got your Twitter and it and that you are following everyone that you're interested on Twitter and that it provides a link to your website on your Twitter and your Facebook. Um, you know, just basically build your own spider web <laughs> on, on the internet, uh, so to speak. Um, and, uh, and my other big advice that I want to reiterate is definitely, you know, help your friends out um, be po and be super positive while doing that process um, because I think that uh, those are the people who know other people, who know other people, and slowly as you, as you become someone whose reputation is uh, that of a giving, positive um, person, that you'll find that, uh, that will lead to yeah, a 
more opportunities uh, with people who are more willing to trust you, more you know open to your ideas and uh, and trust the way that you share ideas as well. So I think that yeah, have your bases covered across social media, and I think that's a good place to start on the internet at least. So awesome, yeah. Paul. Um, you know, I worked my way through college playing backgammon for money. You know, so you, so you suggest they all learn backgammon? That's yeah, I think that's the takeaway tough, tonight. Tough. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Paul. Um, I don't. Paul Weber. I think I guess the reason I brought that up is that that the, you know, the tools are all out there for everyone. And you know, I used to play these guys, and and they'd go, "Damn, you just you won that again. How did you do that? It's a, it's a game of luck. How do you do that?" I said, "It is a game of luck, but it's how you play your luck that you get because we're all get it." We all get the same technology. We all have access to that. It's how you play and strategize and target most effectively for yourself, which is why I think marketing and PR people are so important uh, to get a sense of that and to become your own marketer and PR person and, and to target, again, create those relationships, be smart about that, make it about the other person, you know, uh, about what they're doing in their career and, and, and how you can collaborate with them. That's what we're really looking for, collaborators, people. I love the idea of telling stories, too, and because we all are in here to try to do the best work possible, and we want to surround ourselves with the most talented people possible. So surround yourself with talented people. Create your own content. Get it out there so that we have an opportunity to see you in a way that we never have before. Fantastic. Madeline? Self-educate. So what this means is many of you here may think, oh, I don't know, I don't know about all this digital stuff. I don't really know how to tweet or retweet. I might not know these things. You know, we're a pretty giving industry, and if you don't know something, there's no excuse. You can ask someone, you can ask a 16-year-old or a 12-year-old or an 8-year-old or whatever, <laughs> but somehow do this, find out, and it's all up to you because you must, the game has changed. You are your own brand. You have to promote your own brand, and if there's something that you don't know how to do, if you need help on your introduction, help on doing a splash page, by the way, practice your introduction, but not in the mirror, because we all look kind of creepy when we see ourselves in the mirror. Doing, <laughs> don't do it in the mirror, do it in the car. But practice it on a friend. And if you're not sure about the stuff Anna was talking about, about Facebook and Twitter, it's, you know, Facebook, Twitter, a splash page, okay? It's not that hard. Learn your introduction, get your business cards, be gracious, have gratitude, be out there, be learn, read. Everything we're telling you is stuff that you know, but somehow it's just like anything else. It's doing it, not just hearing about it. But if you don't know, either get the get a book, ask a friend, but self-educate because it's all there. Paul, you want to chime in? Yeah, well, just a question for, for you guys. Who maybe, uh, maybe it's a longer question we don't have time for, but you know, Facebook is sort of daunting in many ways, and, and I've found it very challenging and difficult to try to negotiate the best way to use Facebook for your own career and, and how to limit the noise and try to keep it private but at the same time public. Uh, how do you suggest? It's a good question. How do you suggest negotiating that? that Anna, any thoughts on that? I mean, it depends a lot on who you are and what, and what you have going on in your life, I think, but I th obviously. But I think that the best way to start is really, um, Facebook is a lot more personal uh, than Twitter, for example, um, but you can still, uh, the power of a like, so you, you sign up for your Facebook um, and say you want to go and like your top you know, studios and your top actors and your top shows, because pretty much all, um, Facebook right now has brand pages that are separate than personal pages, so you can still exist on Facebook uh, in a less personal capacity, which is probably good for a lot of people um, in some ways. I would suggest because you can provide some basic background information, like maybe some of you have LinkedIn accounts as well, which is a supposedly more professional social network. Um, you know, and uh, I think that. You do have to be careful about who you accept friendships from on Facebook. I mean, but that doesn't mean that you, uh, they do have on the little gear <laughs> on the side when you're making a post, there's little gear. Um, there's settings there. And they have, um, you can set, uh, literally customize it down to the person who will see it. Or you can just have it be open to the entire public. Or you can have it be set to only your friends or just to yourself if you're trying to leave yourself a note or something, which I do all the well, time. Well, that's kind of creepy. But, <laughs> no, it's, it's great. <laughs> but you want to be open. 
uh, because remember, mm -hmm. I, I look at Facebook differently than Anna Mae. I look at it as a, uh, it's just a virtual phone book. If I'm trying to find right. someone, that's how I find them. So you want to put the information, and then someone will be like, hey, I'm trying to look for you. Paul, remember, uh, I played backgammon with you, and you took my money. <laughs> and I, I know and we're probably running out of connect. time, but I do feel like I should mention, um, there's this thing that we talk about a lot in, in digital marketing called search engine optimization, that's SEO. Now, and that's something, I mean, I'm not saying you should like sit there Googling yourself all day. I'm sure everybody's Googled <laughs> themselves. And, and actually, you can find a lot of information um, literally just by Googling how do I change my profile picture on Twitter. Or, you know, just Google the question and you're gonna find about 18 or 19 hundred YouTube, YouTube videos about um, that very subject that will walk you through it step by step. So that it's in terms of self-education, I think that the resource of the internet um, is there so full, it's so fully complete there that you know all you have to do is literally ask it a question. So, um, but yeah, yep. you, you, you well, need to be there. You need well, to be the, have and, and, and all the of those And the interesting thing about that spots. is we've spoken about how the internet, uh, you know, social media is, is a direct relationship between you know the actor and the casting agent, or the, either the actor and the producer, but it's also a direct relationship between the actor and their fans. Especially on Twitter, I think that that it plays in a it's lot more. It's a way more. to broadcast and build your fan base, which which you know producers you know notice. Now um, we have two things left, which are going to be great. Um, Brian is going to show us some technology on castingabout.com that lets you. I'll let you explain it better than I. And then after that, we're going to take some questions, which I think have been uh, handed in. Uh, we don't have to spend a, a lot of time here, uh, but I think um, when we put together Casting About, like I said, it came out of my own experience not having the information that I needed. And I think um, for the purpose of tonight, the way Casting About is laid out and the way actors have been using it sort of reflect a lot of the principles we're talking about tonight and having being informed and then using that to form your team and your group. Um, so, so very quickly, um, and some of you yeah. may... Actually, boy, let me jump in. Um, we're not here to sell a service. Um, the, the, the point is not that. We're here to educate you. Um, we have a tool that, that um, we think fits in with a lot of this same kind of stuff, and uh, so we want to show you the way some people that are, that are using it, but you don't have to... The, the point of tonight is not buy something. The point of tonight is be smarter. Um, and so I just want to make sure everybody understands that. That's our goal is, is you know, is, is that's what we're intending to do. So... And, and I think the way it's laid out, and, and there's some good news here. We're talking about uh, the amount of actors out there and the amount of submissions. I think the the, ult the other side of that is how much work there really is out there and how many people there are out there uh, that you can build relationships with. Um, some of you may already know, uh, when you log into Casting About, you're basically presented with what we call the grid. And this is just a listing of every union project that is casting in Los Angeles or New York. Uh, we do TV, and we track TV and film projects in LA, and we do TV, film, and theater in New York. So, you know, I, I, when we scroll through those 1,500 submissions, I always get a little depressed, you know, for a single role. But when I scroll through here, and I look at everything that's casting in Los Angeles, we're up to the C's. Keep going. Wow. D's. This is every, every union film and TV project currently active or have, has a heartbeat in Los Angeles. Now, there's a lot of projects. We're up to the H's. But more importantly, look at the names associated with each of those projects. Those are the middle columns. The first column is casting directors. Next column are associates. Next column over are the assistants. And as we scroll through this list, you're going to see a lot of names. These are the people you need to know. And as Brian has said, you don't have to know all of them. Okay? You need to know a handful of them really well. And they need to know you really well. And that may take a while. And it's going to take some time and some effort. Um, we put, uh, the, the first column, as we said, is, is the actual project. Next column over is its current production status. Uh, anything with a heartbeat is going to be here on the default grid. That's anything that is uh, either shooting or casting or even on a hiatus or on hold. It still has a heartbeat. It's still around. Once it's closed or wrapped uh, or canceled, it, it's archived. You can still search for it, but it's not going to get in your way here. The casting staff is there. And then the last column on the right are notes, things you should know as, as an actor. I mean, this is where my friend Dominic saw the shooting in Pittsburgh and was able to, to walk in and say, hey, I, I see you're doing the film in Pittsburgh. Um, for any one of the projects or people, if you want to know a little bit more about them, you just click on them, and it gives you what we call the detail box. Uh, this is going to give you a log line about the project. Again, know a little bit about what the project is. If the project has a website, you can link to it right here. Again, do your research, be informed. Know the tone and style, at least, of the project you're, you're going in on. Um, you uh, can keep notes also for any person 
uh, or a project. Uh, keep your own running notes. They're date stamped. They're private. They're just for you. Uh, if this is a long-term process, getting to know these people, you're going to need to keep track of who you met, when, what you talked about. It's not a full contact manager, of course, but at least it's a date stamp of, of your contacts. You can do that for projects or people. Um, and I think the most important part, when you click on a person, it'll show you the current projects that person is working on. And if you click on archived, it's going to show you a history, a short history, the last couple of years since we've been around, of stuff they've done. Again, this is important getting to know the people, being informed. What kind of projects do they work on? What stories do they tell? You're going to find some casting directors gravitate towards certain kinds of stories. The ones that are the same stories you gravitate to should be on your target list. Um, now, how people are using this. When we first started it, uh, the idea way back when was a, a label generator. You could just click on any one of these names, click print, and it's going to print mailing labels for the people you choose um, with their current mailing address. Now, we have a team of researchers, both here in LA, we have another team in New York, who update this and contact casting offices and production offices uh, to, to keep it up to date. But I think over time, it's, it's really evolved, and I love what actors are doing uh, using this as a research tool as opposed to just a, a label generator. Uh, and that can be everything from forming a target list, taking the time, going through, looking at the new shows, uh, picking a certain type of show. You know, I, I've, I've made uh, a living playing lawyers, and uh, so... I, I wanted to do so comedy. Have I, so yeah, have I. I know. <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> Sometimes. I'm pretty sure you've made a better living than Blair has playing a lawyer. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I had a full head of hair when I started years ago. <laughs> I actually, I think I qualify for the bar in some states. I, you know, I, it, and I, I, I came here wanting to do comedy, but it turns out that the, the stories that I sort of told most naturally uh, were, were those, and people wanted to hire me for those, so okay. Uh, and, and so, you know, keeping track I of, think of you're funny, Blair. Who, I don't care what anybody you. says. I think you're hilarious. Um, who's, doing, who's doing the next law show? You know, uh, that's, that's important for me to know. Um, there's, you can pick a certain type of show, you know, hour, half hour, soap, whatever it may be. Uh, and the other drop down right there is its um, current production status. We have the, one of the stat I, one of the yeah. statuses is, uh, is ordered. Um, and every year uh, after the upfronts, when shows are picked up and they're ordered, uh, you can, I do a search here, and that's going to show me everything. Well, everything's been picked up now. After the upfronts, we have a whole list of shows that don't have casting directors yet. And my job is to look at every single one of those shows, find out what they're about, find out which ones may meet my type. And then when a casting director is attached to that project, if I know them, great, they get a congratulations card from me. If I don't know them, then perhaps they get an introduction from me. Um, so building the target list of who's doing what and who I want to reach out to. Then following people's careers. I have a list of, of associates and casting directors. I log in once a week to follow their career. Uh, because, like we said, it's a two-way street. And if they get a new job or, or a new gig or a promotion, you know, I want them to know that I'm generally happy for them, that I'm following their career, perhaps sending the message that, you know, I'm following their career, staying on top of what's going on in the business, and, and hopefully you're staying on top of what's going on in my career as well, and, and we can work together. Um, and again, even just something as simple as taking a look at everything that the people you're about to meet are working on. So you can go into the office and say, thanks for calling me in, and, you know, I, hey, I saw you picked up the new pilot or the feature film, congratulations. Because marketing doesn't have to be just the blind postcard. It, it has to, it's face-to-face -face marketing. It's, it's, it's meeting them... One of my favorite moments ever as an actor was I just read for something on Warner Brothers. I was walking back across that bridge to the lot, and a casting director who hired me in my first gig here in L.A. goes blowing by in a golf cart. And I knew that her partner had just left to become a coach, and she was running her own shop by herself for the first time. And, and I just waved. I say, congratulations, boss now, huh? And er, stops the golf cart and says, can you believe it? You know, I can't, I, I am, I'm a little nervous, but I think it's so great. I've got an office here on the lot, and oh, my God. And somewhere in the back of my head, you know, I'm thinking, this is what I came to L.A. to do. I'm on the Warner Brothers lot talking shop with the casting director. And it's not about, hey, well, you know, good luck in your job and keep me in mind. You know, it's not that. It's just congratulations on your job. That's so great. Uh, she says, how are you doing? I said, great. I, I was just reading for this thing, and I've been working, and, you know, we'll see you later. And that's yet another step in our relationship, another impression that, that goes along the way. But that kind of stuff doesn't happen without being informed, exactly what you said, without knowing. And, and so what we've tried to do is just gather who's doing what in town and put all in one place and update it so that you can then go out 
form your own marketing plan and use this information that best fits your plan, your stories, and where you are in your career. All right, great stuff. Um, I'm going to take a, a couple questions uh, from That's the audience. Sweet. Um, oh, yeah. all right. Nice That's job. Good. Cool stuff. Great tool. Um, here's a question. Thank you. Kickbacks I'll throw, I'll throw it to the panel. Um, it's a bit broad, but I think it's, it, it's important because we talked about marketing materials in general. What are three things that make an actor's marketing tools stand out for you? Is there something that, that, that in, with an actor's marketing materials that really, really makes it pop? Glitter. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Don't do that. It's been done. Don't do that. <laughs> Scented cards, yeah, not yeah. good. Is, is, is it too hard? Is it, is it something that you know it when you see it? You can't really... Well, just to go back to the, to the basics, you want to make... Whatever you have should be easily... This sounds so basic. Easily readable. A lot of people make these mistakes, particularly actors. They'll use crazy italics, kind of fun, funky font. You got your picture. You got a lot of busyness. You got like crazy background. Simple, simple, simple. Remember, the business card is only to give to me to put into my computer, and then I throw it away. So make it easy so I understand what it is that you're trying to do. So yeah, I yeah. say well, we were Brian and I were in New York talking to a casting director, and and I remember they pointed to this stack of, of postcards on the desk, which she picked up and showed that were blank on the other side. And she said, we get these every day. And quite frankly, it's insulting. Because what it says to me is, you have no idea who I am or what I do. And she said, we also get the stack of postcards that say, dear casting director, please consider me for anything you're doing. Now, and she said, that's insulting too, because I get it. They're an actor, I'm a casting director, they want me to bring them in. Why? You know, why, why should I bring you in? Um, out, of, out of the hundreds of actors who are contacting me. So I, I think, um, you know, maybe to answer the question, uh, the, the one thing that would stand out is, is speak to what the casting director is doing. Give them a reason for them to bring you in. Why? You know, maybe I see you're casting the new show about the high school and I've played a lot of teachers. I hope, hope I can help you out. Uh, you know, it, give them a reason. It, it, again, there's subtext to our marketing messages, not just in the scripts, but the marketing messages. And the subtext shouldn't be, I don't know who you are, I'm desperate, please God, give me a job. The subtext should be, hey, you and I are doing kind of the same thing and hopefully we can both help each other out. So whatever that, however you say that, whatever the message is, I think that's gonna make you stand out from all those mass mailings that literally say nothing. You know the old days of one size fits all? Gone. It's now targeted marketing. Personalized messaging. It's one to one. It isn't just like, here I am, world. Do you look at uh, postcards at all? Yes, I mean, I. I'm slowly changing about this because, you know, we used to get all this hard mail years ago. We used to get stacks and stacks of photos, and then, then it trickled down to what it is now, which is, you know, we're very lonely now, and we actually <laughs> like to get mail once in a while. So I kind of like to get the hard, you know, the postcards at least. Let me know what you're doing, um, you know, or something you want me to see, either on television or play or show or showcase. I think that's still valuable, but I think a lot of that's going online now. And I think that's saving you guys a bunch of money, where now you're, you know, uh, hitting us up on Facebook or social media or, or uh, websites or something and letting us know what's up with you and giving us an invitation that way. And I think that's, that's terrific. And, and, and again, you know, a marketing tool, just make sure when you do self-tape your video, you know, so if you do put yourself on tape that it's that it's really well done. It's well lit. It's actually can, for a hundred yeah. bucks, you can buy a good camera, and a hundred bucks, well, you can buy a decent uplight, and have a good reader, and and just do it professionally. I can't tell you, especially now. I mean, I, I did a project a year or so ago, Spartacus, where I was looking for, you know, um, a, a new lead, unfortunately, and also a lot of new um, actors, and we went all over the world for that. And I'm looking at till two or three in the morning, self submissions from everywhere. And who knows what I might have missed, just because I was so bleary-eyed and, and some of the lighting was so bad and some of the acting, it affected the quality of the acting, actually, because yeah. I mean, I think we, the, you need to give yourself that advantage. I think the guideline for that is it, it doesn't have to be great unless the fact that it's not great is going to distract from the work that you just did. And that's a hard line to, fo to follow. One of the things we discovered at Breakdown Services when we started seeing a lot of people doing the self-taping you stand five feet away from the camera, your reader stands right next to the camera, who's gonna be the loudest person? Right. And so you're rah, 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 and your reader is super loud, and you're rah, rah, rah. So uh, one of those really simple things is just get your reader farther away so they're out, of their, so the volume levels are the Behind same. Behind the camera. 
Yep. That's actually a really good point. Just and, and actually, there's another question, which is basically that. What's a good example of a pitch video? Where can we see one? Does anyone specialize in filming them? Is it, can someone go online and, and you can be like, hey, wow, this is a you know Paul Weber proved, you know. No. <laughs> well, well, I'm well, not sure who those. I know they're out yeah. there. I really. I mean, I know, and yeah. I, I think I'm sure you guys can find that. And I wish I had that answer of being able to Anna, that's pitch your a couple companies. You're the social that media guru. But there are <laughs> companies out there that will do your own, will create your own, uh, you know, you guys probably know who those, these folks are. What's that? We ha you have to follow Anna on Twitter, and then yep. she will yeah. post. Yeah, right. <laughs> hey, guys. Um, she, she Breakdown post Services right. has come up with something called ActorLink um, uh, at ActorLink.com. And um, it is acting link. Oh, J J Jenna is watching this thing online right now and shaking her fist at me. Um, ActingLink.com is uh, a, a, a way that you can self-tape um, and um, put these kinds of things together. It's brand new, and um, primarily the schools are using it as a way to get their graduating um, students out. Think of um, it as a virtual showcase. Yep. You know, uh, you, you actually take a, a two-person scene. Your partner is off camera. Uh, your part is filmed on camera, uh, and then it's it's posted into this database of of more or less showcase scenes yep. uh, that, that can be searched by industry professionals only, by, by invitation, uh, agents, re uh, managers, casting directors. Yeah. Um, so the idea is, you know, a lot of schools like said, are using it when, you know, they come out and they do the showcase yep. the once a year. For casting directors who can't come, you can then go look at a whole group of, of uh, students from one school, and that actually goes for uh, schools and classes here in LA as well. If you're part of a, a group or a school, uh, you can post as a group. Uh, a, a whole bunch of showcase scenes. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's new. There are emerging technologies like this where, you know, and that's your job is to go find all of them so that you can have these scenes or clips out there to create those multiple impressions. But, but that's one worth um, We're going to shift gears for one sec. Uh, the question is as follows, and I'm curious to get your take on this. Um, we'll just take a couple more questions and then wrap it up. Uh, casting workshops. Valuable? Not valuable? I've... I've taught them, I, um, and, and I, I emphasize the word teach. I think you, you have to be careful, and I think you have to target also. Who you want to meet, who's doing the shows that you want to be on. I think you need to have, um, if you're brand new and you fly into town and you have no experience and no training and no foundation, do not do a casting workshop, because we rarely forget you. Um, <laughs> But if you do have some training and experience in foundation and you want to try to meet casting directors, I wouldn't expect to get a class unless maybe you go to those casting directors, and I, I have to include myself in one of them, who actually tries to teach something in the class. But you can't expect that necessarily from everyone. You're going to meet a casting director, but I would suggest meeting that casting director, meet the associate. Um, you know, uh, assistants, you, you, sort of, you sort of take a risk with that, and and just target again. Be real careful, be real specific, and s try to see those casting directors that you want to meet. And I know actors have done this, and they've they've told me, because I talked to one yesterday, and he said, I targeted five casting directors, you're one of them, um, and I, uh, I really wanted to meet you, and I really did a lot of background on you and the four others, and I've been able to meet all those casting directors. Now I have a relationship with them because of because, and this was a graduate of, you know, one of the major um, schools as well, too, so he was a good actor, and that helped a lot. But it made, put him on my radar, and he was really careful about the, uh, the casting people that he went to see, and it was, I think that's really valuable, and can be very valuable. So to spend a lot of money going to all of them, hoping to, to find someone who's going to hire you and, and, and book a job. Back to the 405 again, <laughs> showing the headshots yeah, out the window. But, but, do if, it. but if you do your homework and, and look to, maybe it's a way to begin a relationship that's going to pay off somewhere down the road, then perhaps it's worth it. Yeah. All right, one last question. I think this one's kind of fun. Um, we talked about it a little bit. IMDB rating. Does it matter? <laughs> star meter. Does it not, your star meter, does it matter? No. No. Doesn't? No. There's another, uh, there's another uh, social media rating system called Clout. Which, uh, Clout. And, and Clout. It's with a K. K-L-O-U-T. Yeah, yep. oh, yeah, thank you. Uh, it's, uh, we'll talk about that a little bit. How does that work? How does so, that work? so Clout is, aggregates all of your social media uh, interaction, engagements, uh, and likes, and uh, 
followers, and it gives you a score. Uh, seems kind of arbitrary sometimes, <laughs> um, but uh, and a general sort of uh, title to go along with that score, such as you know follower or pundit or broadcaster, or et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I think that that's somewhat related to the IMDb score. Um, and do you, think, do you think cloud's more powerful because it yeah, takes well, into account cloud's it more general. Okay. I mean, you know, it's not so specific to acting. It's, it could be for anything, pretty much. Um, Interesting. But you can um, give an award and earn points in certain uh, areas of expertise, such as acting or, you know, L.A. or uh, whatever, what have you. Pretty much anything, anything from restaurants to um, hot dogs, specifically. You know, so I think that. Yeah, it, I, I, I wouldn't overly focus. I mean, it's important that if someone looks for you online that they'll be able to find you, but it doesn't really matter. I don't think anyone is going to be overly impressed. By I, I do have to say, I was talking this weekend with a small independent film producer who does very, very small films, and he specifically said to me, and I cringed, um, that while they were doing the casting process, they looked at the IMDb star ratings. And that, that's what I did. Um, because I know that people artificially inflate those things. And I know that those numbers don't matter. And yet, what he's saying is they don't matter, but they matter. So, um, uh, I, you know, I, we've said earlier, do good work. And that trumps everything. You know, no matter what, do good work. Make sure people yeah. can see the good work that you're doing, and and spend less time worrying about what your star meter is and what you know what your cloud score. I, my cloud score is like six, and I think I'm reasonably influential, but uh, but cloud does not agree. Um, uh, Mine is sixty six. Yeah, no, no, you're totally wait, wait, you're is way it, is you're it way better, better to be than higher. Better to be lower. Can with you be cloud? Partner? Higher. Sure. Higher. Okay. Good. Who knows? The main well, supposedly, thing <laughs> I mean, it's totally arbitrary, though. I, th I think that it's it's partially uh, the algorithms that generate these scores don't know you and don't care about you. So, you know, don't be overly focused on those things. Brave I think. new world yeah. of and it's, uh, social media. But more importantly, it's just important to kind of know about it. So if someone were to say to you, yeah, my cloud score is like 84, you're like, oh my God. Well, if you ever uh, get in trouble with an airline and you have a high cloud score, well, you can say, you know, oh, my well. <laughs> well, that's what I was going to, I was going to mention that. I, uh, I took a social media marketing class not long ago, and they, they focused a little bit on cloud. And they said it's really important if you're ever going to complain. So I used it. Yeah. I had a problem Good with Lamps complaints. Plus, and I was having an issue. And I said, well, you know, I have a really high cloud score. <laughs> I think mine is like minus two. Oh, well, uh, yeah, well, sir. Yeah, yeah. I got, you cannot believe, and they said this in the class, that you will notice people change. As soon as you say that, people are like, oh, man. This, what clout means is that person's really active online, which means if I'm not happy with the lamps I got, I'm going to start tweeting about it, or I'm going to start a thing that says I hate lamps plus, which I don't. I love them now because they were so great <laughs> because of my great clout score, nice. just in case they see this. So more importantly, so, so know your cloud know score. Know about it. Know your cloud score. Yeah, definitely well, know them. Yeah. Well, guys, it's okay thank, if it's too. Thank you. For, I want to say thank you so much for coming out, and I actually I want to give a shout out to Melissa Zachary from SAG for putting this panel together. Let's so have a round of applause. Yeah, Melissa. And a, and a round of applause for our great panel. And thank you so much for coming out. Thanks very much.